Good evening, everybody. Welcome to my live stream. I'm here a couple of times a week, especially since we're facing a new lockdown again with even here in the Netherlands, a, um, a curfew starting at 9 p.m. in the coming weeks. So I decided to, uh, to uh, increase the live streaming again because I know it's very much appreciated. And uh, tonight I have a wonderful guest. So I'm every Sunday I invite a guest and tonight I have the wonderful, fantastic, beautiful and the wonderful personality and amazing musician, Hildegun Øyset from Norway. Hi dear Hildegun. Hello Mike, how so, are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's so good to have you here. Thank um, you for inviting me. Yeah, well, you know, you, uh, I know in Scandinavia, you are uh, uh, an iconic musician doing so many great things, but I also really think you should be heard by another audience, you know, all over the world, because I know you have traveled a lot. You know, that's something we have in common. What we also have in common is that we played a lot in, in like uncommon places, which is very interesting. And uh, we're going we're gonna to share some uh, of these things. But um, yeah, um, it's, it's so, so wonderful to have you here. And um, we were introduced, well, I was introduced to you by a very great mutual friend we have, Shannon Mode. She's a South African saxophone player who also has been, li has been living in Norway for quite some years now. And I remember years ago, she told me, Mike, you have to meet this amazing musician and personality. It's, and what's nice about her, you cannot really categorize her. And that is so true because your music is like, you know, you, it's also your personality, your music, it's something you cannot really categorize. So, because um, you're so versatile and you play also folk instruments and you, and you uh, include a lot of folk music in, 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 in your jazz playing and all of that. So, uh, yeah. And before I, I, I was th maybe thinking to show a movie where you don't play trumpet, but the goat horn, which is really quite unique, I think, especially in the setting you play it in. Um, uh, if you have any questions, ah, yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Um, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have quite yeah. many. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. I have yeah. like all these. It's a, it's a whole gold horn studio there in, the, in northern Scandinavia. <laughs> yeah. The whole farm. Yeah. The whole farm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, if you if you're in, especially if you're watching uh, this stream on Facebook, please do us a big favor and simply share because I've said it many times, but thanks to people sharing this live stream, simply press share. It has reached so many new music lovers and that's something we really need. So do us a big favor and please share this live stream so other people can enjoy the wonderful Hildegan as well. So um, I'm going to um, to play a movie, uh, a clip. And um, um, this is called, well, I thought it was, it said mañana. Uh -huh. Mañana, si, mañana, si. Uh -huh, but, but, yeah, of course you thought it was. Yeah, yeah but, but yeah. it's manana, right? It's That's without right. The, the, the thing on the end. It's not Spanish. No, it's actually Pashto. Um, oh, Pashto, or the, or the language they speak in Pakistan and, mm -hmm. and Afghanistan. It means, um, uh, thank you. Thank you in Pashtun. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. We'll get to this later, to Pakistan and yeah. uh, Palestine and all these amazing uncommon places you've been to. So let me play this this video first. Can you can you say something about this video? Oh yeah, this is actually... Um, I had the CD release in April. Yeah, right after lockdown. Not lockdown and... Um, this was one of the songs on that CD, and it's actually the name of the CD. So, so okay. and we made some videos uh, for the release uh, of the Manana CD. Wonderful. So that's the last CD, actually, okay. with my uh, jazz quartet. I'm very proud of these musicians that is playing on the album. Uh, it's uh, Perodva Johansson on drums, and Espen Berg on piano. And Magne Turmodsetter on the bass, double bass, yeah. Wonderful, oh. wonderful. And you're playing on goat horn, eh, on this I track? I play the goat horn on this, this one, all yeah. All right, yeah, because, yeah. all right, here we go.
Yes. yes. Wonderful. Well, since you're holding the instrument in the live stream here, mm. it's so wow, such beautiful music. Wow. Wow. I'm really impressed. As always, Thank you. yeah. Can you? I mean, of course, you know. You're. Let, let's let's um, uh, get this straight here. You're known as a jazz trumpeter, and you also play the goat horn. You know, so it's you know, it's not like you're only a goat horn player. Before people would get the wrong impression. But since you're, so we're, we'll get to the trumpet player, uh, trumpet playing a little bit later. But can you please um, um, explain something about this beautiful instrument? Yeah, it's uh, it's from the goat, um, and uh, it's a traditional instrument from Norway. Um, yeah, it was actually when I was traveling in Pakistan uh, quite a lot. I I went to these Sufi ceremonies and uh, I heard uh, the goat horn there in these ceremonies, and I was thinking at that time I was trying to find out uh, how to make sense, I mean, musically, to find uh, similarities in the, the Pakistani cultural music and, and uh, bring in something from Norway. And uh, at this time, I thought, OK, this should be easy for me <laughs> uh, to learn because, because I'm a trumpet player and uh, how you blow. Uh, yeah, it's quite similar to how you blow the trumpet. And um, yeah, so when I came home uh, after one trip, I just uh, got hold of one from a, from a man in Norway called Magnar Storbecken. He's uh, making a lot of these. But uh, sometimes it's difficult to, to get the horns because it's not that common to have goats and especially to get these long, nice horns. So, uh, but I was lucky, I got this one. This is my first first horn. And then, as I showed you earlier, um, I, I have a big bunch of horns uh, to be able to play in, in different keys. Um, so most of my compositions uh, I made for this horn, um, but uh, after I got these other new horns, I start to also compose for these horns. And what I like is to, to bring the goat horn in wherever it is not meant to be or yeah. it's not normal. Uh, so, um, yeah, I don't have the traditional background. Uh, so I was thinking, okay, let me just play, play my music in improvise and uh, that's what I'm doing actually um, lately I tried to also learn some traditional songs so now I also like to do that but of course I do it my own way yeah, um, yeah so I, I'm playing the goat on with big bands and with uh, other bands and also we went on tour with one of my bands called Rabalder when you yeah. Joined me, Mike. Yeah, yeah that was and great. We, yeah, uh, I played some horns, and also I brought in this uh, kudu horn. Uh, do you want me to show the kudu horn? Yes, what please, of course. That's show us, the, show us, show us the kudu that, horn. That's the cool yeah, one. He'll bring it on, Hildegun. <laughs> <laughs> this one. Wow. Oh, let me. Just like this. So, it's from kudu. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's like a big uh, antelope. Yeah. Or, how do you say in English? I believe. Anti antelope. I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's not so many notes I can play on it, but I will give you some notes. Yeah, and because and before you do this, because you were saying before, it's the, the blowing into the instrument is like similar technique to the trumpet, but then with trumpet you use valves. And yeah. How do you how do you manipulate the tones then? The lips. The lips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and then um, with the fingers. 
almost like a recorder. Like oh, okay, so yeah, yeah. So there are okay, okay, okay. But you oh, only have a uh, no, oh, sorry, I didn't see the <laughs> I didn't see the tiny holes before in the screen here. So the it's screen. one okay, okay, finger. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I got uh, four there and one there. Yeah. So that gives me six notes. Six notes. So uh, if I cover cover all the holes and then I lift one by one. So one, two, three, four, five, six notes. And this is a half step, this one. So so kind of this one is like a minor ish <laughs> and um, i also uh, found out how to play in major and i i had to teach myself because i didn't know anyone uh, that could teach me so i found my way to to play all the notes of course you can put your hand here to, to, to lower it. Yeah. Uh, okay. note yeah, yeah. or quarter note if you want. Uh, ah, so okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. But yeah. I also have special combinations that that makes it possible. And also because I'm playing so much uh, and playing the trumpet um, makes you quite strong and then you can also force the instrument into the next octave even if this doesn't really help you then you just have to Blow harder. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To get these notes in between, but then you have, then you need to be quite strong. But but is there like a basic scale you use? So can like, you or like can you the, please show us? If you just lift one finger at a time, then you get a kind of minor. Like yeah, yeah, because it's not grammatic. It it it's like okay, yeah. At the end, I showed you these combinations that you can make to to play. So you were like switching between like A flat minor and A flat major, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, on this here. one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the okay. longer the horn is, yeah, because yeah. then the lower key. So this is F. And uh, yeah, the longer, the deeper. Yeah. So uh, I'm. Uh, if there are any farmers listening, then if you get some long horns, please tell me. I need some deeper. Um, everybody in the world, is yeah. there any farmer who has still some goat horns left? <laughs> then um, you can send them by DHL. <laughs> That's actually quite fun because this summer we were at the Intern Jazz Festival. And uh, I told the audience, and I talked to someone after the show, that they knew someone and they would connect me to these people with the horns. That's very, that's cool. Fantastic. That's so cool, yeah. So let me show how it sounds with the kudu. Yeah, yeah, mm. please. Oh, and it's, it's quite a range, yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> <It's smelling. laughs> you're smelling it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I think if if live streams or anything you can see on video, if you could also smell what's going on on the actual video, I think we would experience a lot of things totally different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can hear and see, but we cannot smell yet. But you, yeah, but that might change with all the techniques. So um, <clears throat> let me see if there are any questions here. Um, there is. Um, um, 
Ah, uh, hello from South Africa, Cape Town. Yeah, ah, yeah, Cape yeah, yeah. From Carol, our friend Carol. Oh, Carol, hello. Yeah, yeah. and wow. uh, and Gregory France is also watching. Yes. Uh, cool. So a lot of yeah, because well, actually we. Uh, um, before we answer the, the the question, I see another question in the chat. Yeah, because that's that's actually that's also where we met South Africa. We both have this yeah, strong connection with with this amazing country, and uh, you've you you've you've also been there so many times, and you did all these recordings and collaborating with South African musicians. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I lived there for a while. Actually, yeah. I for one uh, time I re I stayed in Carol's house actually um and she's been here in this house and you too mike but uh, carol was here she was on uh, uh traveling with uh <laughs> you know oh. the ship you go oh the ship which goes all, 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 yeah the fort, that's oh, yeah, yeah 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 yes that's yeah that's and amazing in Trondheim, so yeah so if someone wants to visit me you can actually go with <laughs> <laughs> with that ship <laughs> yeah 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 well well my experience in norway is especially because i i've done some tours in the north is yeah, that yeah. yeah yeah i mean in touring in the north means that it's sometimes faster to go by boat and then go by car or you have to drive through sweden you know it's such a dramatic incredible landscape actually yeah uh, it's it's, uh, it's amazing yeah 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 um let me um uh show another question you kind of already talked about that farmers well the, how you find the goat horn but uh, this is a question for my friend esther thanks for tuning in esther uh, mm -hmm. did you make the the, the holes yourself no i didn't uh it's Magnar, um, Storbecken. Uh, he made all my horns and uh, of course he's not to playing that much himself so so but he learned how to where to put the holes and how to make it so i'm very happy uh, so he made all these horns and all, also my lure the long one yes yeah, oh. yeah the lure yeah. yes yeah 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 it's yeah it's <laughs> the lure wow that's long yeah that's long <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'll show you in this camera. Actually, this one and the and the and the and and the, um, and the kudu one. When you bring them on the plane, if you, of course, um, <laughs> what happened? Do you, they ask you a lot of questions? Do you have trouble with with with? with Actually, yeah. how, how does well, that work? I just remember now, uh, in Pakistan, or oh, where were we traveling? Uh, yeah, via via Dubai, I think, and, and I think it was there. Uh, where they started to ask, uh, it was a little bit suspicious, and uh, I I don't remember why they asked questions about this, and uh, I started to to play on on it in this big hangar, uh, and yeah, of course it was a lot of fun because of this instrument. Yeah, start to blow, and you get a lot of attention. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you, you you have to carry you have to do carry on, right? You cannot. Yeah, I'm actually okay. cheating because it would be lovely if it was one piece, but this is uh, you can. Oh, okay, you can. Like okay, this. all right, okay. So then I have this special bag. Yeah. 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 yeah so yeah. Um, this is all, again Magnar that makes it for me. Yeah. So and uh, you can also uh, make it even longer. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah wonderful but, uh, yeah so like this it's very hard to travel with it yeah 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 One, can you can you can you switch camera yes yes yeah, sorry we were yeah yeah that's better yeah but you know it was actually good because we saw it from the side angle yeah but uh, yeah yeah wonderful so um again before mm -hmm. i want to show another video the one with gregor hill but that's also with the goat horn eh? that's an improvisation one or okay. you're, pl you're playing trumpet there I don't know which one would you, would you like to show? The one in seven eight, that that nice video. Oh, I don't know which one. Okay, the one I'll, you just played, Manana is seven eight. Um, it doesn't matter. Let me. Doesn't um, matter. I'll tell you me. after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, before I show this movie, um, you're watching the great Hildegon Oyset in my weekly live sh show where I invite guests 
from Norway. She's a wonderful jazz trumpet player and plays the goat horn and the beautiful personality. Um, again, if you're watching this, please share this live stream, especially if you're watching on Facebook. And let me um, uh, play this movie. Let's see. Um, this is uh, a duo with a wonderful drummer from Switzerland. I know he's, he's also, uh, yeah, Gregor, he's also the head of the jazz department at the jazz school in Zurich, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. And, um, and you, you, you really recorded this very nice video entitled Verdandi. Ah, oh, that one, that's with, that's with the trumpet. They're playing trumpet. Well, that's good. Let's, let's switch to the trumpet mm. that people, you know, because again, you know, you're, you're actually an incredible trumpet player. So uh, oh. let me show you this one. Oh, no, no, thank you.
Yeah. The great Hildegun Øyset from Norway, live in my live stream. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Hildegun for joining, being here. Beautiful music. Um, I'm having a, 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 I got a question here and actually, um, let me project this question on the screen. This is from my great friend, Sebastian Netta, who's a wonderful drummer from Germany. He actually has something really interesting, which fits perfect into nature. And that's, he built a portable stage. So he has a stage and he can, he, he takes it all over Germany. We played quite some concerts and then mm -hmm. you can play in nature. So to have people experience concerts in nature. Wow. It's it's, yeah, it's a wonderful, yeah, maybe we could uh, put it on a boat and bring it to Norway and play there as well with this uh, stage. I'm yeah. ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you're ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And he, um, because the thing is, of course, you know, you're the perfect example, in my opinion, too, and I think many people will agree, of this really Nordic ECM Fjord sound. You know, you're you're a great example of this open, beautiful sound effects, all of that, and um, um, and that's all. Uh, you know, uh, that's actually part of your nature, of your of your culture. Sorry, but um, because you grew up in this, this incredible environment. I mean, in my humble opinion, um, you know, I've I think Norway is simply the most beautiful country in Europe. I've never seen anything mm. more dramatic. And anyway, what I also like about Scandinavia, as opposed to other um, places in Europe, it's the only place in Europe where you really have space. I'm talking about real space, you know, just, uh, and that's, that's wonderful. But his question is here, from Sebastian, um, how does nature inspire you? Uh, it's not possible not to be inspired by nature. I think it um, inspires me a lot. And... Uh, I mean, sometimes you you even try to sound make to copy sounds from the nature. Uh, I remember I tried to make this uh, like going to the sea. Uh, perhaps you try to to you are inspired by some something, but perhaps the audience doesn't uh, hear the same. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't matter because it's just yeah. music. Yeah. But um, yeah, I uh, uh, maybe not so many good examples. But sometimes, actually, as I said, try to sound like the nature. If it's like waves uh, or wind or yeah, uh, the stillness, of course, uh, the the like. Uh, the endlessness yeah. depends on where you are, of course. And but I can also be very much inspired by urban stuff like, uh, yeah, machines and yeah. Uh, yeah. And I really like to to combine uh, more noise and that stuff and uh, yeah. Yeah. inspiration from the nature. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm very much inspired by the nature yeah. in so many ways. So we, we could have uh, our own live show on, on that topic. <laughs> yes. Well, I also think, you know, I've, been, I've visited you a number of times in Norway and we, yeah. toured, well, we toured and all of that. And I mean, the thing is, even if you are like in the capital Oslo, okay, that's maybe a, bi bi a bigger city. But other than that, whenever you go out, you're so surrounded by nature immediately. I mean, the house where you are now, I've been there close to Trondheim. And I remember like, you just go out and there, 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 there it is. So it's, it's right in your face all the time. So I, I, I it's like, like second nature somehow, right? It's like, it's part of your yeah. system. Here I can just go skiing. I just go out to the door and then yeah. the skis on and just go. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. now it's like that. Not all over, <laughs> always, of course. But I remember, Mike, when you were, I mean, in this area where I grew, grew up, it's close to Finnskogen, it's uh, in Kongsvinger Kommune. Uh, and uh, we were driving there from the airport and we were got closer and closer to the house and you, you you were sitting in the car and you just sounded like this wow yeah whoa yeah. <laughs> and there was a um, deer jumping 
passing the, the <laughs> in the forest or yeah and i i just <laughs> i remember i was laughing because it's really how we when i grew up we were saying that this is the boring flat part of norway and oh uh, because it's not this dramatic uh, uh, you know when the mountains yeah 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 fjord and that type of uh, nature yeah. where i grew up but uh, now when i don't i'm not living there um, every time i come back to that area now i really see the beauty um, yeah. forest and lakes and and yeah. the you know the soft uh, yeah. yeah it's it's no mountains it's just yeah but it's beautiful beautiful that's also always an interesting thing about traveling eh? you i mean we both have traveled all over the world and then you go like yeah i'm going to explore all these countries yeah. and all these cultures which is true but what you also really start realizing is you learn so much about your own country because you start looking at it from a totally different perspective and i find that yeah. so fascinating all the time you know it's it's yeah yeah, yeah. and know? that's also how i was i mean when i started to compose or like um tomorrow composing this was when i lived in south africa and so far from home that's when you start to think uh, how does it sound the music of norway you know and yeah. uh, it was important to me that not sound like uh, a typical jazz musician um but to to put the nordic sound into it um, yeah. to fr also there i was trying to find similarities and yeah. differences yeah. between the yeah 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 yeah, yeah. norwegian and this yeah. the african yeah so yeah. Um, wherever yeah. i go i try to do that more or yeah less. yeah mm -hmm. and then let's talk about a uncommon country where we've both been not not together unfortunately but we've both visited a number of times which is pakistan yeah well, yeah because yeah we also had some common friends yes uh, gumby you played with yeah Gumby? yeah yeah Gumby. yes Gumby yes and mekal i know mekal you know mekal oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and uh, papu the flute player yes all these guys from lahore yeah actually yeah. i brought papu back to norway i mean i recorded him and brought him back uh and uh put on my first album uh, my goat on album called hildring so i put him there yeah uh, to get the right uh, Eastern sound to some of the songs. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Fun. By the way, let me, because um, speaking about that album, which I absolutely love, um, let me hear, because this is your website, right? Hildegon.com. Yes. So please go there, everybody, and check her beautiful music. Uh, and oh. you're, you're, you're all over the socials too, right? And Facebook and Instagram. and But I found some really beautiful tracks on your on your on your uh, website as well so uh, check oh. it out yeah yeah Thanks. wonderful yeah so uh i think um um but tell me a little bit more about pakistan how you experienced it uh it was uh, you know uh, every time you watch something from there on television it was always something that was not so nice and but when i was there i i really felt safe and i i really felt the it was the most lovely people i ever met and it was really they just dropped whatever they had in their hands and you were a guest and it was really wonderful wonderful people and uh, uh, also the music so inspiring and yeah. so i have great memories from there yeah and uh, yeah. i always i was very lucky because i've been so many places also in pakistan and see the difference between lahore and karachi and islamabad and also also rural areas wow what a country and uh yeah. Yeah. it's very, very sad that uh, we don't get to hear more nice things about that country and uh you know the nature and they have they really have everything but you know it has to be governed also the right way i don't have the solution but uh, it's no. really beautiful people and beautiful country nature. yeah i'm totally with you here totally yeah. with you i've been there 
three times. I had, had exactly the same experience. I didn't feel unsafe, although they took a lot of safety precautions from which I thought they were a little bit exaggerated, but of course you don't really know. But other than that, the people and the food, the hospitality, the yeah. music, the yeah. scenery, um, mm. Yeah, really, and yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, f fully, yeah, and it's unfortunate. You know, there are a lot of countries like like this who have this like reputation, like like Rwanda, which is like stunningly beautiful and uh, also great culture. And if you and if, if you talk about Rwanda, everybody still thinks about the genocide. Or it's the same with uh, with Bosnia. Mm. You know, like Sarajevo. People think well, they, they know the war is over, but there's still that that that. That stigma of of those countries being dangerous and problematic and mm. uh, and yeah it's uh, I, I I'm totally with you here. Mm. Um, let me um, play another video of one of your wonderful projects. Um, this is your um, quartet uh -huh. with a, with a video entitled "Time Is Coming." Oh yeah. Yeah, can so, you can you tell us a little bit about this video? Um, yeah, it's the song called "Time uh, Time Is Coming," right? Yes, yes. Yeah, because the album is called "Time Is Coming," and uh, on this song, uh, yeah, this this was the first time I I was trying to to combine the goat horn and more of my uh, kind of world music. Uh, that part of me together with the uh, jazz and uh, so that's why I brought in this time is coming and I also lived many years in Sweden and and one of the first uh, uh, memories I have from um, this when I discovered jazz music was uh, Jan Johansson Jasper Svenska this album and uh, uh yeah so I, uh this was an inspiration i was thinking okay now i play the goat horn and jazz music and i was just trying to make some something in this in yeah something similar yeah. and uh it didn't uh maybe i don't hear it today but that was the how how it started when i composed that song i, I had this Jasper Svenska in my head, and uh, yeah, uh, it was fun to to try to combine this with the, the jazz music and the jazz quartet, and uh, so this uh, that album was the beginning of this process. Wonderful. Let's play it. Coming home by Hildegard Oyset Quartet. Time is coming. Yes. Ah, uh, time is coming. I'm sorry. No, no. no. <laughs>
Yeah. The Be- Hildegun Oyset Quartet. Beautiful. Mm. Wow. Thank you. Fantastic, fantastic musicians. Who are the who are the other musicians playing on the, on this video? It's uh on this one it's uh uh, Espen Berg on piano, Mats Eilertsen on bass, and uh, drums is Per Odvar Johansen. Wow. Wonderful. And all of them, they, they also have their great quartets and trios and, you know, so yeah. they are yeah. very busy, so I'm extremely happy when yeah. I get a chance to play. Yeah, yeah. M- Mats actually performs a lot in the Netherlands, also with Dutch musicians. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know Mats, yeah. But uh, but you know yeah again also Norway it's it's uh, I, I'm I'm totally in awe with the Norwegian music scene. There's so many incredible people there, and and what really always strikes me with Norwegian musicians, where it's, it's everybody you know it, it's they, everybody has their own voice. It's not like the copycat thing there. You guys are so free, and and, and that's what I've that's what I. Um, uh, that's what I've seen with so many musicians there. Do you do you have a reason for that? Because I do you can you explain this? Do you do you know why 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 this is? Uh, I'm not the right person to ask, perhaps because I lived so many years abroad, and uh, I mean when I came back to Norway, uh, I became I came back as a jazz musician. When I but when I left, I was classical musician. And uh, have, yeah, so, uh, and before I left, I was not really, I was still a young person and going to study. So I, I was not, I never heard much jazz actually. Uh, so, yeah, no, I don't have a good answer. Of course, it's, uh, it's not one answer to it, uh, but, uh, um like like now it's a lot of export of the norwegian jazz but it it wasn't it hasn't always been like this yeah so and uh, perhaps because of this and it's also the right time um now it's yeah. uh, it's a lot of norwegian musicians everywhere and, yeah 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 uh, but but, but, but it... the ecm as you mentioned and uh, the Rainbow Studio, and yeah. uh, I have to also just add that uh, Jan Erik Kongsherk, uh, yeah, we lost him, but uh, I have to mention that he was one of the reasons why I put together a jazz quartet. Actually, um, yeah, I just want to say that uh, he was doing a lot for ECM and the ECM yeah. sound and all all the Norwegian musicians. Uh, in that, uh, in at ECM, yeah. I mean, technically, I think the ECM sound was was created by him, right? I mean, yeah. Musically, the the artist did it, but technically, he 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 created that incredible sound. Yeah, you can say. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we miss him very much. Yeah, yeah, that's a big loss. Yeah. Yeah, really. that's a that's a big loss. Yeah. So. Um, of course, we're we're how how is the I mean without going too 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 deep into the whole uh, COVID thing because we're bombarded all the time yeah. on the media. Yeah. But uh, but how is the situation in Norway? And do you have is there anything going on musically? Do you maybe how long is the lockdown going to be? Do you think there will be summer festivals again? Do you have any idea what's 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 going what's going to happen? It's going to be summer festivals again. Yes, very soon. <laughs> 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 Although yeah, yeah, you still have a long winter to go, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I really hope. I really hope it will be. Yeah. yeah. No, it's um, it's quiet. Yeah. Uh, I'm the lucky bastards. Sorry, <laughs> I've no. been actually been playing uh, quite a lot, like a little bit here and there. Uh, every time there is a chance, I've been very, very lucky. There's a lot of musicians they have not been playing at all and it's really 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 horrible so um yeah as you said it's um, everywhere and we are we are tired of it tired of talking about it and we just are trying to 
um, survive. And, uh, yeah. But uh, I've been lucky, as I said. And uh, doing projects all the time when it's possible to do a little duo concert or perhaps work on a video when it's when it, when there's a little opening i do a lot of stuff um and check out what is possible and uh, of course um in november we we actually had a jazz festival in trondheim which was the rest of the country was like quite uh, closed and here we were very lucky it was a little opening and i went to concert of course you cannot be so many in the audience, but, yeah, 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 that's, but it, yeah. there were live concerts which were like gave us a lot of hope. And then, okay, then it goes again. And yeah, but these small openings here and there has really been, uh, yeah. yeah, makes us survive, I think. Well, of course, you're not as, as densely populated as in the rest of Europe and in such a big country. So mm. that might help because. Yeah. It here, everything, here, everything is totally locked, and mm. even a curfew now mm. it started yesterday. So, uh, yeah, you guys are way better off, I think. Yeah, yeah, which, which, which is uh, which is wonderful. And do you have any future traveling plans coming up, pro provided that uh, this this craziness will be over? Yeah, um, it's it's tough in the calendar, but yeah. <laughs> but you never know what yeah. will happen yeah. and what will not. I'm really hoping that the Vossai Jazz will be, uh, we can go and play there this year. Last year it was, of course, um, not happening because it was right after COVID, uh, right after lockdown. So um, we, are, we are hoping for this year to be, yes, now we can, now we can play. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, yeah. But everything, yeah. If we are happy with the vaccines and yeah, these yeah. things, then yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that that goes. Yeah, that's that's mm. the same thing everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So um, I want to uh, play one other video, um, mm -hmm. which I have um, prepared here, and this is one. Ah, yeah. This is a. I thought this was really cool. This is actually. It's uh, it's called Panda. Aha, yeah, that's live. Yeah, that's a live live registration of what it, oh. it looks like. It's a festival, right? Yes, it's a festival. It's a jazz fest. The uh, the festival in in Trondheim. Normally, in it's in May every year, and um, they asked me to uh, compose music, uh, and I got the chance to put together a new band. And I call this band uh, Panda, and uh, yeah, uh, this is one of the songs we were playing. Um, and uh, um, what we, what happened with Panda after this festival uh, is that I made a trio uh, because of yeah, you know, uh, to make it easier to travel and uh, and also. This project was for children, so so there is a story to it, and I played at jazz festivals for children. That's nice, but it's some of the same music, um, so I call it Panda Trio. But but this uh, at the jazz fest, it was the premiere for this band, and uh, I was uh, I I had a girl Juliane Schultz. She was uh, recording it uh, and made a video from the concert wonderful mm. let's uh, let's enjoy it
Yeah. The great band Panda, Project Panda by Hildegun Oerset, guest in my live stream tonight. Yes. I'm enjoying this so much. And uh, we were supposed, we said before the live stream, well, you asked me how long should it take? I said, well, mostly about an hour. And we're already like online for one hour and 15 minutes. But I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying this so much. So, uh, and um, I'm, I'm having fun. This yeah. is what you're doing, Mike, when, when you in, invite uh, musicians like this, it's incredible. It's uh, such a nice thing, thing to do. I mean, you're lifting up uh, other people. It's wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, th thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing was th th during the first lockdown in March, uh, almost a year ago, th the thing was with live streaming, I always wanted to do it. Mm. Uh, you know, because I noticed like, you know, because I think, you know, the thing is a little bit, look, everybody's blaming Corona. Mm. Um, of course, we have a huge problem here. But before Corona, I, I, I saw already like, you know, it's harder to, to bring the odd to, to get the audience to concerts. Um, people are sitting at home watching mm. Netflix or watching YouTube. And, you know, we don't sell CDs anymore. And then I realized and like, and like I had a gig in Japan, a concert, and I just put on my iPhone, just press Facebook Live. And then I realized so many people were watching. Yeah. So it's always something I wanted to do. And then uh, when the lockdown started, I thought, well, now there's no excuse anymore. Because, you know, b b between wanting and doing and being busy and traveling all the time, you know how mm -hmm. it goes. And then I decided, okay, so we're going to be stuck here. Everybody's going to be stuck at home, mm. sitting behind their their, their computers. So uh, um, this is the time to do it. So I went online for a week and I watched yeah. YouTube tutorials and I started playing piano every night and it worked out great. I didn't know. I mean, so many new people discovered me. But then, of course, after a couple of weeks, I realized, yeah, I mean, OK, so, you know, I technically now I know how it works and all of that. But mm. there's so many great people out there who are sitting at home. Who, who you know who deserve to be heard as well and that's why i started uh, inviting guests because simply out of love for for the people i invite and for the music of course so uh, I, I love doing it and uh, it's great to you know i mean like in this case too i think because from, from what i can tell you already at the chats you know like i said in the introduction i mean in norway and in, in, in scandinavia you are you know you're very well known and very well established but in other, you know, but here, like in, in the Netherlands, not too many people know you yet. And I think uh, these are great uh, things to do in order to give someone that platform. Mm. Um, let's see. Um, we met in Amsterdam, didn't we? Or oh, in Netherlands last time, didn't we? That was, in well, London. no, you, uh, you were playing with the Trondheim Jazz Orchestra and Chicoria, I think. Yeah, at, yeah. At the, the Norci Jazz Festival. Yeah in Rotterdam yeah and that was it was so many people <laughs> yeah wow oh yeah 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 yeah. that's like the the Norci Jazz Festival is yeah. the, the biggest indoor jazz festival in the world huh? oh yeah yeah it's insane I mean you know oh, yeah I mean it's 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 insane you have to choose like I'm going to you know Herbie Hancock and Chikoria uh, are playing at the same time you have to choose and all of that yeah. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insane. It's little. I mean, it's. But you know, it's it's like option paralysis. Mm. You know, it's like a Chinese menu where to choose from. But uh, yeah, but but of course, it's great. With uh, Tineke Postma. You play with Tineke. Yeah, just once. You know, uh, I must say I've been playing in very many different all women uh, projects. So actually, I have um, this year, don't tell anybody, but it's 30 years anniversary. I mean, been a professional musician for 30 years. <laughs> but um, I also uh, tried to make a list um, last year. How many all women bands did I uh, play in? Or, yeah. And it was, uh, I had 30 names on the list in 30 years, 30 names different bands and some of them different band was called sisters in jazz 
and uh, one of them was in Germany and Tineke was there and also she's playing with Tari Lynn Carrington yeah. she was also yeah. there yeah. Yeah. and uh, European uh, girls, great girls that was so much fun yeah. but playing with so many great women so, so that's also something um, I mean I wasn't always uh, uh, pushing it that much as I am now, I, I was, uh, it was a little bit tiring that we had to talk about these things all the time. And uh, of course, especially in the 90s, when I was uh, playing with the uh, Boozland Big Band, traveling there, uh, uh, it was always a lot of people after the concerts that wanted to ask me about how, how it was to be the only woman in the band. And it, oh, it yeah. was always... The topic being a woman playing jazz playing the trumpet but nowadays i'm grown up <laughs> and and uh, i i'm very happy to to be to have the possibility to 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 work to to try to make uh, make a difference and so i have this uh, i'm employed at the Grieg academy in bergen and uh, have some great musicians there but uh, every year i have this course jazz course for young girls um, and also try to find out why a lot of girls they don't uh, uh, go to the audition for the to to study jazz and uh, yeah let's see uh, it's actually quite many now uh, here in norway studying jazz but of course not enough it doesn't have to be 50 50 either it's just i just want to try to find out what is it because these girls that that are extremely good and talented why don't they keep on so that that was that's uh, very interesting to try to find out so, so you so you're trying to encourage you to take it to a higher level or even a professional level yeah just yeah proud to be a role model and yeah yeah and, yeah of course, um, every professional female player might be a role model for young girls, uh, but I was just not so, yeah, it was uh, not so interesting when I was younger, but now I think uh, I have to do it because uh, for 30 years, the, all these projects to was put together to do something about the the problem and when we still have this this problem then okay maybe should also try to do something yeah. but uh, yeah so that's cool and it's uh, from all these bands there's always one or two or some musicians that are my favorite musicians today and uh, so then it's so easy if you if you want musicians that are easy for me to 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 choose between female and male yeah. musicians so yes, i think it's i think it's wonderful that you that you have have, have done this you know to get it more recognized yeah you no know, yeah 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 because it's so, uh, so yeah. if you don't know so many female yeah. players then it's not so easy to no 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 band, of course so no i i also find it a pity sometimes that the especially the jazz scene is a very male dominated scene and mm. uh, and it doesn't have to be like that so that's no. that's great um, that also needs to be changed a little yeah bit. yeah yeah need more different people to play jazz yeah different. yeah i mean um, <laughs> yeah but, uh, different men and different women yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. good for the for the music i think yeah, Gregory um, Franz from from Cape Town is actually commenting on this. Mm. He's, on the, the live? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he, I, I projected on the screen here. He says, if you come to Cape Town again, there is a female big band here with Amanda Tiffin. Oh, Amanda, so, yes. Yeah, also a wonderful yeah. musician. Yes. Uh, the, lady, the Lady Day big band. Oh, that's nice. Nice to Great. hear. That's wonderful. And also, you told me that um, you went with a female band to Ghana. Yes, in West Africa. This this band called Nordic Beat. Uh, it was a quartet we played for many years. Actually, uh, many years we did uh, a lot of school concerts, uh, 
and uh, but we also uh, traveled quite a lot uh, for uh, companies in Norway and uh, there was a uh, phone company that brought us to to Ghana to perform with uh, rappers and these rappers in Ghana they were extremely famous in their country so of course um, when we played with them we had their audience and it was extremely nice 27000 people in the audience uh, <laughs> on a big wow. field and you know this feeling when you can go <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> it's yeah, not yeah. every day in, in the jazz club you get that feel but um, it was a nice <laughs> nice experience so six yeah. men uh, rapping singing and four musicians ah oh, we had also two which was guest so we were five i think yeah this is a long time ago so yeah i think she was also with so five girls mm -hmm. in the band yeah. that's quite opposite from the normal especially uh, you know if you're a jazz musician and there are twenty thousand twenty seven thousand people yeah <laughs> they're um, watching you and listening to you that's uh that's a whole other uh number than we were used to <laughs> yeah. and the trumpet players yeah like this. yeah yeah yeah, yeah no, that's every great. Day. yeah speaking about trumpet would you be willing because uh during the sound check before the live stream you 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 had your trumpet next to you and you played some beautiful yes. solo would you mind playing something for us live here during the stream and flugelhorn and oh uh, yeah 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 trumpet. yeah you, you asked me to remind you you had to switch the microphone or something. Yes. Yeah, and the camera. There we go. Could you hear it? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. Wonderful. And you also play the flugelhorn, right? Uh, yeah. Just oh, you could. Yes. Mm. Mm. There it is. It's not that big difference. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit cold. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, you're you're in you're in Northern Europe. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the pitch yeah. is not so great when it's cold. Yeah. yeah. Our friend Carol Martin, um, from Cape Town, while well, living in Cape Town, she's also asking, she's commenting on what you said before. Uh, I think Hildegard fits well with mixed genders and ethnics, not just women. My questions to Hildegard is, are you including African sounds in your contemporary compositions? Absolutely. Um, yeah. On the last album, um, yeah, I, it's, uh, it's part of me, the African. Sometimes I can only hear it myself that I'm composing something is in, inspired by my years in South Africa. Um, but on the newest album, the Manana album, there is one song called um, Safe Mode. Uh, that was also how I felt in South Africa. I felt, felt very safe, safe and yeah, uh, that was great years in my life. To, yeah. 
to be there. How long did you live there? Hmm? How long did you live in South Africa? I don't know, <laughs> two, two, um, two years uh, and a little bit more. Um, yeah, because after I moved back to Norway, um, my only network was outside Norway. Uh, so I kept traveling down to South Africa. So it felt like I still lived there. Uh, yeah. For a while after I actually moved my address to Norway. Yeah, yeah wonderful. So yeah, there's actually a couple of songs there. Uh, the one song is called Now Now. It was uh, because we were having fun and making jokes about sometimes there was a musician. He said, yeah, I'm just around the corner. I'm with you. I'm with you now. And then perhaps he's, he's still at home. <laughs> <laughs> ah yeah yeah I'm I'm there now, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. okay then he's in his car and then it was like yeah I'm there now 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 that means okay then he's perhaps parking finding a parking spot and you know so uh, that was uh, we're just uh, having fun with this so now is sometimes not today <laughs> yeah uh, but uh, so the, the cultural differences, we are so, so um, we're talking about the time and, and if, if it's one minute late, it's like, what? What's wrong with you? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, I like both. I like uh, when we can be on time and we have a, uh, an appointment and we can trust, trust that. But I also like this... Uh, Let's see. Uh, you know, I I, I want to I want I want yeah I, I need to share a story here about this. Yeah. I was I was in I've been to Suriname quite a lot. Huh? Suriname is a former Dutch colony in yeah. the north, yeah, because we have a strong relation with that country, and it's it's, it's an amazing place. And uh, but also you know people well it's you know it's it's close close to the equator. It's thirty two degrees all the time, and you know it's really like this slow pace there and. Uh, I was, I arrived there and then the day after, the first day there, I, I had to give a master class, like at 2 p.m. And, uh, well, and I was jet lagged, you know, you know how you feel if you're jet lagged, you're a little bit like, can, you know, you're tired and all of that. And I was there and it was supposed to start at 2. And then like the first guy, he shows up like 2.30. You know, and then the singer walks in. She says, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh it was oh supposed to be at two. It was three o'clock already." And then at four o'clock, finally everybody was there. And then I, I'm not wearing a watch right now, but I was pointing on my watch like this, and I said, "Guys, um, sorry, but I thought we were supposed to meet at two o'clock." And then one of them said, "Yes, yeah, sir, but the thing is, you've got the clock, and we've got time." <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful, right? Yeah, that's that was, wonderful. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah that's, we need uh, to leave leave that uh, watch. Uh, yeah, not wear it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, before we're going to wrap up, I, I I would like because that's that's a place I have not been to, and you have, and that really fascinates me what you did there. Because uh, uh, you've been to Palestine a number of times. Yeah, a number of times. Um, the first time I went there, it was with uh, the Norwegian uh, Concerts in Institute and were helping uh, musicians to make uh, programs for for children to play uh, in schools, school concerts. And uh, I met uh, these young musicians and, uh, and several years later, I was actually working in bands with the same musicians, which is, uh, and uh, they are now in uh, one of the bands. Um, the band is called Sharaka Ensemble, and we recorded an, an album and uh, called Never Again. And uh, you have half of the band is Palestinian musicians, and and the rest is from Norway. And we try to to mix the this Nordic. Norwegian uh, tradition with the with the Palestinian or the Eastern, yeah. 
So and this is I love love this. I love doing this. And uh, has this been great. recorded? Hmm? Has this been recorded? Yeah, it's an album called uh, Never Again. Or is there something so, on YouTube? Yes. On this? Because what I could maybe do while we're ta as we're talking. On YouTube. Uh, maybe I can. Can, can maybe... Yeah, the making of the ba the album is uh, there, so it's like interviews and stuff. That's on YouTube, uh, and also a little teaser for the album release. I think it's on YouTube. Because well, I'm while we're talking, I'm searching here on YouTube on a, in another screen. Oh, multitasking. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm not too good at it actually, <laughs> but I'm trying. But um, it's, it's you well, doing it, and not yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what's uh, What's what, what's the name of this project again? Tell me where to search on. Because... Ensemble. So it's it's uh, S H A R A S S H A S R S H A R A T A. Because this would be maybe a nice. So we recorded it there, and we've been touring here and sometimes there and actually um we played also in lebanon with this band unfortunately uh, some of the musicians didn't get this uh, they were not allowed to get in didn't get a visa and, didn't yeah get, it's yeah. always this yeah. issues to get out and then to get in um so we played uh, with uh, yeah Tarek could come and we could uh, some of the Norwegians went there and played in refugee camps, so the Sabra Shatila camps on the today it uh, was uh, for the massacre. How do you say? The, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I cannot find the video. I'm sorry about no, that. No. But um, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. But look, I really want to thank you for this wonderful interview and this talk. And I mean, oh, we, don't we, stop. We, we, <laughs> you don't want to stop? No, I'm <laughs> cold. I thought maybe you're going to be tired. But um, yeah, so much but, fun. Yeah, it, it's 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 a lot of fun. So um, so I'm I'm talking here to the incredible Hildegun Oyset from Norway, trumpet player, goat horn player. She showed us so many examples. Um, again, if you like this live stream uh, and you're on Facebook, please share because it reaches a lot of music lovers because we suppose that most of your, or a lot of your friends uh, are music lovers too. So it's a great way to, 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 to share and to, to, uh, that more people get to know this uh, remarkable woman. And um, yeah, uh, let me at least, uh, before we wrap up, I'm gonna wrap up with, with showing the first video, which is like almost two hours ago, so I don't, you know, it doesn't doesn't uh, really matter to repeat it once more. And uh, um, unless you want to talk about other things, I mean, I'm enjoying it a lot, but uh, uh, you know, there's so much to to talk about. But um, of course, you got your website hildegun.com. You're all over the socials. Uh, you got your YouTube channel. You're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so ch check her out and uh, yeah, and I really hope let's let's oh yeah before let's let some memories before we wrap up. Yeah. Rabalder. Yes. Huh? So you invited me to play with your wonderful band Rabalder, mm -hmm. and I flew up to Norway and we played like quite in the north. Eh? In yeah, it was in this area, but a little bit up north and. Um... Yeah, I invited people I I adore and been playing with. So um, Frank Paco from uh, Uhambo, the band I have yeah. in South Africa, together with Ida Gormsen, the bass player yeah. from Denmark, um, and uh, of course you, and Ingrid Kindem from also the band I mentioned earlier, the Nordic Beat, and uh, yeah, and uh, Frank pa Paco's brother. Uh, also came from Stockholm, uh, percussion player and storyteller. And uh, what else um, did I mention? Oh, we were we were travel, traveling up north, and uh, one thing that was not so nice was that in at, uh, I had a 
tiny budget, so I tried to book uh, the hotels uh, that was yeah close to the uh, the railway station, and it was not the most expensive hotels. So when I picked picked up uh, the guys uh, uh, in the morning at a hotel, I just heard one of the guys said, "Yeah, uh, the police came into his room," and I was like, "What? What did you say?" Yeah, he, yeah, I remember that. I yeah, remember, remember that. that. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, they were shocked. With yeah. Guns? This is in Norway. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they came yeah. into the room and uh, please go to the bathroom or something. And, and they were searching through their stuff. The, uh, this was so horrible. I yeah. mean, uh, coming from like, uh, yeah, they are born in Mozambique, yeah. but lived uh, in South Africa. And uh, to me, this, this was like, this is not possible. Now yeah. they come to Norway and then the police go into their rooms. Like, yeah. what is this? Yeah, yeah. So actually, yeah. I, uh, to try to make the story short, I ended up calling to the, the police department and ask, is this, what, what, how could this happen? I mean, these guys are so kind and so, I mean, they do nothing wrong. How no, could of course not, no. Uh, and yeah, they could not really understand it. So, so their only answer was that it, it must be that they looked like someone that was, you know, they were searching for. So, but this is so horrible. But it's possible to go into a hotel and get the keys and the key card. And I mean, yeah. so I never really got the answer how that was possible. So, I mean, your hotel room, you know, when you're on tour, your hotel room is, this is your home. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. But there, you know, I suspect there was some xenophobia there. You know, I mean that that's that's unfortunately that can happen mm. everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've seen it too. You know, traveling with people, colored people, uh, who were, you know, also here in Europe. It, I mean, in, in in Western Europe, it happened a lot. You know, it still happens. I, I've seen it recently too. I was traveling with uh, with a black singer, and then we came back. To, to Schiphol Airport, or I mean Schiphol Airport, and he was the guy who was being investigated and all of that. It's mm. Horrible, horrible. Mm. Yeah. Well, there's still uh, still a lot to be changed there in the world. Eh? Mm. It comes it to is. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But other than that, I remember we had we played some some great music and we had a lot of fun. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so cool. So we have to do it again. It's just a problem when you have people from some so many countries. It's different difficult nowadays but yeah. one day we'll do it one we'll, day we'll do it we'll do it yeah. we'll do it Looking we'll do forward. it again maybe here in the netherlands or wherever yeah, Yay. Let, 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 let's work on that after this insane pandemic is over yeah yeah let's but do thank that. you for doing this mike it's so important thank you for thank for, you so for sharing all this great um information with us and your beautiful music Mm. thank and, you uh, yeah and uh yeah so everybody thank you so much for watching for listening i'm going to play one other video by this great artist hildegan oyset from norway trumpet player uh, goat horn player check her out uh, i projected her website here and you can check her check her out on all the socials and uh, support her and everything so i want to and i want to thank you again for watching and for listening mm -hmm. um I'll be here next Sunday with another guest and tomorrow, Monday, I will have my weekly piano playing live stream at 9 p.m. Amsterdam, Central European time. Thank you so much. Please share this stream and uh, have a great night. Thank you, Hildegun. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat>
Thank you.